What's going on, Pokemon Go trainers? Welcome to episode 158 of Lured Up, the podcast where we take Pokemon Go way more seriously than we do ourselves. Lured Up is part of the Pokemon Professor Network, and today is Wednesday, December 9th, 2020. I'm your host, Ken Pescatore, joined by my co-host, Adam Tuttle. Adam, what's up? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, how are you? How are you? It's about to on? be a uh, Christmas time. It's uh, it's it, we're in the month of December. I, are you like Italian? I don't know. Or something? I was thinking like... about a sandwich. I, I'm so hungry. I I turn I turn Italian when I'm hungry. I'm like, <laughs> can I get some pasta? <laughs> I gotta need some parmesan cheese, a mozzarella. Well, <laughs> yeah. Long story short, I'm hungry. I'm doing good. Good. Let's have good. a fun show. Good. Dude, we got this is uh this is an interesting week because we've already had a slew of uh, announcements come out via the blog and Twitter and all that good stuff and then we have some embargoed news that we're going to be covering tonight that will uh you know obviously release before this podcast comes out. So we haven't had a chance to get the community reaction to it yet. So uh, it'll be exciting for us come Friday when this podcast comes out and all the good news is out out there in the open, but, uh, there's, there's a lot, man. It, it's, you know, we, we've been talking about this for a year straight, how the pacing of the game has just continued to increase and, you know, it kind of plateaued for a while and then it started picking up again. And it's like, how, you know, can they keep this up? And it's like, they release seasons. We think that it's going to slow down a little bit, but it's, it's like been the opposite. It's been absolutely insane. Like things have just been, I don't know, man. It's just nonstop to the point. There's of, always something to do. Yeah, but like now we're starting to get into, on, into like compounding events and overlapping events, and like we'll get to it. But like you know, Niantic will put a blog post out about an event, but then within that single blog post, there's three separate events that are all tied into the single event, which are all tied back to the season. It's like whoa, there's a lot to uh, to kind of keep track of and. You know, without like filling out your calendar, or keeping like a little scrapbook with you, it's really going to be tough to to figure out what the hell is going on. So make sure everyone takes a you know a good look at the today view over the next couple of days because there's just there's just so much uh, so much shit going on. But on today's show, we're going to recap the previous week, which includes the Kalos celebration, Swineb spotlight hour. Uh, we'll talk about our progress with the level cap increase. We have two shiny mythical Pokemon coming to the game. Very, very exciting. They both come wrapped in their re- in their own cool event, one of which is like this massive mother load of an event. So that one will be really fun to talk about. Uh, we have a raid battle reward and egg management test that has been announced. Ooh. This This is very promising, and I think that this is really the result of community feedback. So that's really cool. We have more Galarian Pokemon on their way to Pokemon Go, and we'll close the show preparing you for the Community Day weekend this weekend, which is Saturday and Sunday of just a smorgasbord of 2019-2020 Community Day Pokemon. But Adam, as per usual, why don't you get started with our weekly recap, and uh, there's a lot. There's a lot to go through, so uh, let's, let's get to it. All right, and then after we'll we'll hang out and talk about the Kalos celebration because uh, you know it's a thing. But this week <laughs> kept every type of trainer busy with plenty to do across many of the game's systems. We had some time with the new level cap, and the community has had some time to share their feedback. And it's crazy seeing so many people be like, "I'm already level 44," and I'm like, "Hey, I'm still going for 41." <laughs> Uh, we have a segment of trainers that don't care at all about the level cap increase. <clears throat> Me. Even some that were already level 40. There have been con- some concerns from longtime players that aren't yet level 40, thinking that reaching 50 is just an impossible task. On the other yeah. side of the spectrum, you have the legacy 40 trainers that have been attacking the level 50 or you know, racing each other to try to get there as fast as possible, like crazy animals. Or Pokemon, I guess. I don't know. As the journey has reignited their love for the grind, which is awesome. Like, again, seeing so many trainers be like, oh, I hit level 41, I hit level 42, and, like, just going back and forth is so phenomenal. Yeah, but some of these people are fucking insane. Like, Terry Wolf is fucking insane. Even Unbreakable. Unbreakable was like, when they announced the level cap, 
you know, Unbreakable's our our absolutely amazing Discord admin and tournament organizer. And she's like, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go too hard. And then like the next day, she's like, yep, oh, here I am. And she's like. <laughs> doing all this shit she's like grinding it out i was like you fell for it they got you they got their hooks in you <laughs> they got so it, you. it is really no, it, it is really cool to see though it's it's really cool to see how engaged trainers are with this so it, it's been fun all right yeah in the back half of the show we're gonna revisit the level cap increase and discuss some of the changes that were made to the xp and starter system as well um but as far as i'm taking it i'm just going super slow it does not... That's fine, though. No, 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 That's I know. Fine. And I think that trainers should just... I, I feel like the game will last longer. I feel like I don't... Like, yes, I have a goal. And, like, now it, now I have, like, a solid one. But it's like, do a bunch of raids. I don't necessarily get to do a raid every day. I mean, yeah, I could make time and try... But, like, I'm, I'm doing at-home learning with my son, so it's like... I don't necessarily leave the house. Like I might take a walk to the mailbox and hit the stop to keep my streaks up, but I don't necessarily have like a reason to be leaving. Well, I, I think this is the great divide where the the race to 50 has really drawn a line in the sand between free-to-play players, even casual spenders, and then the whales, the people that are just throw fucking money at the game. And there's nothing wrong with that. If the, you know, do you? I'm not going to shame anyone for for spending money, but to get to where a lot of these trainers have already requires a lot of money out of pocket. Uh, especially when you get to some of the higher levels, when you have to do you know all those rocket battles. It's like, you know, we were just on our our patron Zoom call, and Jamal, dude, I, I was cracking up. He goes. The beginning of the call, he's like, yeah, I'm going to be patient. He's like, I'll wait till midnight to get my next balloon, you know, and then 6 a.m. I'll get another balloon. It'll be fine. And then like 20 minutes into the call, he's like, I can't take it anymore. I'm buying radars. (laughs) (laughs) It was so funny. It's like it's it really, really does. You know, the, the race you get you have a major advantage if you're if you're spending a lot. But for some, that's just not in the cards financially. And for some, that's not in the cards mechanically. They just don't want to because they don't want to rush through. And that's kind of where I'm at with things. Sure, I can throw a lot of money at this and do this quick, but I I don't really care to do it quick. I want to have some kind of long play here where I could just slowly chip away at this because I just don't want it to be over. And it's like... I don't know. I, I think that, you know, it takes people years to get to level 40 and it's like now they're just so going so fucking crazy for level 50. I mean, I, I think, you know, I think people have reached 48 and then 48 is the one where it's going to take so long because it takes eight weeks to you have to walk 25 kilometers or more for eight weeks. So everyone is going to hit a wall at that point. But to get to that point already, it's fucking insane. The level cap increase has been out, what, not even two weeks. So it, it's definitely been really cool. I, I'm I'm taking it pretty slow. Uh, you know, uh, it is what it is. But I, I'm having so much fun with it. And my favorite part of the whole thing is just seeing everyone so re-engaged with grinding and re-engaged with going out there and catching Pokemon and doing raids and people that never really into rocket battles, you know, now they're like, you know, you could say that they're forced to do them, but it's like now they have a motivation, they have a goal. So it's just been really cool to see everyone that's that's been so, you know, just hyper-focused and, and back on the grind. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's a breath of fresh air to see so much excitement around the game right now. And yeah, speaking of excitement... Phenomenal. We have the Kalos Celebration up next, which uh, wrapped up yesterday. It was met with mixed feelings as the spread of wild Pokemon was a little unbalanced, uh, with Litleo literally being like a community day Pokemon, while Froakie <laughs> was as hard to find as a dino. Yeah, the Froakie essentially. Was uh, <laughs> he was so rare. Uh, same thing with like Noibat. Um, one, I, I don't one have Noibat. One of both spawned at my house, so I got them. Dude, Noibat is a legit house spawn. That's legit. Yes. Oh Meanwhile, no! And then recently, fucking, for my like centric, <laughs> and and for my uh, my daily like Pokemon that have spawned, 
recently I got an Adino, um, an Amolga. I was just like, what? what? Like, like, why are these like fantastic spawns happening? Wow. I don't know. Just, just like a side note there. Uh, we also had Esper in raids, which was a fantastic idea by Niantic. As so many trainers were remote raiding. The best part about this for Niantic was people would rarely, rarely remote raid one star raids. You know, it's maybe a clink, maybe a timber, you know what I mean? Shot of the shiny, something like that. But Esper, even though it was in 10Ks like clink and timber, it was just like everyone was doing Esper raids. So they're turning so over so quick. But I know. And it's like people are spending so much money on remote raids for one stars. It's like nine tick. They got their hooks. They got their hooks. They got Yeah, you like again. I got the free one. I used that. And then I was like, I'm out of raid passes. And I'm like, uh, okay, I'll buy three more. <laughs> oh, but it was a good idea. Buy Niantic. Yes, definitely. Uh, but now that that event has wrapped up, uh, we are back at having the raw seasonal Pokemon spawn which has taken some time to adjust to. While the encounter pool has been reduced, it is countered with the increase of evolved Pokemon in the wild. It's nice seeing like Beedrill and there's a potential for it to be shiny. So I well, like that. I mean, I've seen, you know, lots of evolved Pokemon, which is really cool and kind of like off the wall shit. I'm seeing stuff like Noctowl. I'm seeing Grovile. I'm, I, I saw a Grottle the other day. Like, just stuff that you typically don't see. Oh, yeah. Grottle's a is, big spawn on the map. It's kind of yeah, like a Snorlax. No, it, that's what I mean. Like, you see this stuff, and you're like, oh, that's so cool. So that's one of the cool things, like, when, when with Sword and Shield or even Let's Go. You know, you play Let's Go, and you'd see, like, an evolved Pokemon on the screen. You know, that's it's it just gives you that excitement. So... Uh, I'm okay with the the limited encounter pool due to the seasons because you get a little bit more exciting spawns with these evolutions. So I hope that Yes, and more Stardust. Continues. Don't forget that. And more, yeah, and Candy and Stardust. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to see how the Catalyst Pokemon get peppered into the mix uh, when they don't have an event boosting them. Uh, our final bits of gameplay to recap were Swinub, Spotlight Hour, uh, with times to catch Stardust, as well as week two of the Kirim in raids for raid hour. Um, I yep. didn't do either. I did swine up from home while doing other home stuff. So I probably only caught about 50 or 60 swine up, something like that. But Kirim, I think I'm officially done. I think I'm done. And and this is the this is the thing that we should consider. Potentially, the fusions for Kirim, what if they rely on candy? And the reason they gave us Kiram for a month was so we could get the candy required for the fusions. And then everyone's burnt out on Kiram, so no one's raiding it anymore. And it's like, we should be raiding it because we need the can. It's 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 such a, a juggling match. But like, yeah, I, think I haven't I'm even done, done one. Like, I, I'm not, I'm not like, I, I, I still get invites and I'm like, Ugh, fucking Kiram again. It's like. I don't know. It's surprising <laughs> they brought it back so soon and then not with the shiny. So it's like, that's why it makes me think that Niantic has like a trick up their sleeve with fusions or something. But, um, but then everybody's going to get, get mad if they did. I know. Do and, and, and Niantic's going to be like, well, you had a fucking month to do it. We gave you a month. Don't get mad at us. But uh, swine up, no shinies. But that, that double stardust was, uh, was, was pretty solid, but you know, the first day, December 1st, the first day of the season of celebration. And then today being the, the day after the Kalos celebration ended, we're seeing these raw seasonal spawns, the vanilla version of the season of celebration. I've seen a couple Chespin and one Fennekin, um, but it really is a, a good balance, I think, of Kalos Pokemon with all the other Pokemon that are spawning. Um, how, how's it been for you today? Are you seeing Kalos Pokemon by yes. you? Yep. Yeah, I saw okay. Bunnelby, right. Litleo. Um, yeah, Bunnelby, Litleo, uh, Chespin, and a Fennekin. I saw multiple okay. Chespins, though. I've only seen three total Froki, and one of them has run on me. But... I put fucking should have uh, Ultra Ball Golden Raspberry. 
I it's dude, I fault. did. I put and it's your and fault. I, I, you I were you were one up, hand fast catching. That's why you didn't catch it. I ended up putting a fucking hundred plus rare candy in the rookie, and I have my Greninja. So it is what it is. <laughs> I got very impatient. I was like, "Fuck this!" But I haven't evolved any. There was a great meme going around of the uh, the milk carton with uh, Froki on the side saying, like, missing, have you seen me? It's like a picture <laughs> of Froki. But, uh, but still no Noibat, man. I had, not even on the nearby. And it's like, you know, I don't, I don't do the thing, like, in Discord, like, you know, the maps or anything like that. So it's uh, like I was talking to someone the other day. They're like, yeah, it was posted. There was one spawn right by your house that was posted in the Discord. I'm like, bro, I don't fucking look at that shit. So, but uh, it's... I I like that they gave us what was it 16 17 total pokemon including clef key something like that but it will be interesting to see how the rest trickle out like are they going to give us batches of 5 are they going to give us a big chunk like will all of kalos be released in one season like I don't know how they're going to balance it out but it'll it'll be interesting to see because they're going to have to balance that not with a Kalos event. Because we had the Kalos celebration. The Kalos Pokemon were everywhere for this group of 16. But when the new ones start to roll out, there's not going to be another Kalos event to reinforce those spawns. So those Pokemon will have to be in the mix with Generations 1 through 5 plus the existing Kalos Pokemon. So, you know, we'll have to see if there's like a, an event that maybe boosts just that new batch of of callous pokemon but um I, I i like the trickle you know i don't i don't mind it i mean of course like what was it gen 2 that they like gave us everything at once and it was like the you know the mother load of new pokemon on you know and silhouettes yes, and yeah. stuff but yep I, I i definitely don't mind the uh the the trickle rollout i i could be patient with it so i yeah i, I, I mean it. i totally dig it let me let me hold off on catching a new pokemon yeah I'm okay yeah. with that all right, well, let's let's move on to like the the hottest news of the week and this was a fucking big one. This was probably uh one of the largest single event news drops that Pokemon Go has ever done. Now, a couple weeks ago when they announced the Go Beyond update, that was like their biggest update ever, but it was like these four individual events all tied into this one announcement. This is one event. It's called the Pokemon Go Tour. Kanto, which leads me to believe that they'll ultimately do this for every, uh, you know, every region to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Pokemon and the fifth anniversary of Pokemon Go. Niantic is taking a trip back to the region where it all started. Kanto. Now, at first mention, Kanto may not be worth getting too excited about because we've seen so much focus put onto Kanto over the past couple years. Now, Luckily, the Pokemon Go Tour Kanto has a lot more to offer besides just like the core basic, you know, Weedle, Pidgey, Caterpie spawns. Yeah, but now you love can, that. You're going to evolve. I do. I do. I do, I do love that. I, I, re, I know. I know. Especially because evolutions are worth more. We'll get to that. But let, let's start how, with how the event will actually work. So single day event, February 20th. It's like this is two months, you know, ahead. So they're giving you plenty of time. And it's like, why are they giving us so much fucking time? One, it's aligning with the anniversary. So that's it. You know, Pokemon Day is, is the 27th, I believe. So that makes sense. And the 19th, but, there's a new TCG set that comes out as well. So I'm sure it has yeah, something a lot, to do with that. A lot of shit going on there. But I really think they're giving us this much heads up because they want people to play on this day. They want to give people as much of a heads up as possible to make the arrange arrangements necessary to f be free on that day because it's a single day event. February 20th from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. local time. This is going to be a ticketed event, but for the first time, there's going to be two different ticket versions available, red and green. Obviously, a throwback to the original games, red and green in Japan. Each ticket will have different Pokemon available in it, as well as increased shiny odds for other Pokemon. Very exciting. This is a very, very cool nod to like the original main series games and will absolutely promote trading and cooperative play, which is a, is a fun twist on how to do this event. Now, Adam, I know you already know which, which ticket you're getting, but why don't you run through the Pokemon that are available in each, I guess we can just call it the ticket versions. Well, we could say the red version. 
uh, you're going to get exclusive Pokemon such as Ekans, Oddish, Mankey, Gra- Growlithe, Scyther, and Electabuzz will be attracted to Incense. Uh, you'll have an increased chance of encountering these shiny Pokemon, Bulbasaur, Charmander, Golem, Pikachu, no, uh, Squirtle, Pidgey, Ekans, Pikachu, Nidoran, Female, Oddish, Diglett, Mankey, Growlithe, Ponyta, Shelder, Drowsy, Krabby, Hitmonlee, Lickitung, Scyther, Electabuzz, Eevee, Kabuto, and Dratini. Notice that pool. Hitmonlee is like the the star here for each version. So you've got the red version with Hitmonlee and going into the green version. Exclusive Pokemon, Sandshrew, Vulpix, Meowth, Bellsprout, Magmar, and Pinsir will be attracted to Incense. And you'll have an increased chance of encountering these shiny Pokemon. Bulbasaur, Charmander, Squirtle, Pidgey, Pikachu, Sandshrew, Nidoran Male, Vulpix, Meowth, Psyduck, Bellsprout, Geodude, Execute, Hitmonchan, Coughing, Tangela, Horsley, Horsey, Magmar, Pinsir, Eevee, Omni, and Dratini. Oh, it's a fucking mouthful. All right, well, wh- which well, one are you going well, We're for? doing green, and here's here's why. Here's why. Okay. The Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee, like, cool, just line up to have somebody trade with you, maybe one of your lucky friends, just so you can get a good one right off the get-go. Just pro tip right there. Uh, green version, because Eevee... There's so many different evolutions that are needed and you still have Sylveon coming up. So, I mean, I don't know when, but like Sylveon eventually, but you can evolve it in mm. so many different shinies. So it's okay. definitely worth it. Um, Bellsprout is a relatively new one. So, and we just had Scyther and Electabuzz or not Scyther and Electabuzz. We had Electabuzz and Magmar community days. So like those aren't too exciting. I'm still myth- missing Meowth. So... Oh, there's fucking plenty on this list that I need shiny wise, you know, but th- this is, th- l- let me get to the, the, the real hot sauce here because. Oh, yeah, you mean that was the hot sauce? No, no, not at all, Adam. <laughs> the, these, these were the increased chance of encountering shiny Pokemon. However, we'll get to it in a second. There's, there's much more shiny spice happening with this event. Now, uh, tickets are currently available in the shop now. Uh, there is a benefit to purchasing them early. Purchasing a ticket by January 13th will get you bonus tickets to the January and February Community Day Special Research Stories. So if you buy by the 13th of January, you get, you know, they're a dollar event, you know, each. So you, so you, you save, you two, save bucks, two bucks, essentially. Right. Uh, if you purchase by February 3rd, you'll get the special research ticket for the February Community Day. And they do give us the dates for these Community Days. Uh, January Community Day will be Saturday, January 16th. February Community Day will be Sunday, February 7th. So we have those dates. But now let's get into the details of the event. The biggest news is that all, A-L-L, all, Kanto Pokemon will be available as shiny starting at this event. This is huge news, but there are a couple things to note. In the announcement, they say the first 150 Pokemon will be shiny, can be shiny, some for the first time. So obviously Mew is 151. So what the fuck does this mean for Mew? Mew will be shiny. However, it's going to be obtainable only by those who have a ticket and those that complete the event special research, which will ultimately unlock a subsequent special research, which is being promoted as long and challenging, that will lead to a guaranteed encounter with Shiny Mew. So you have the chance starting on February 20th, the day of the event, to get decks, you know, numbers 1 through 150 Shiny. And after the event, they will remain Shiny. So all of Kanto will be Shiny after this event. But the Mew will come after the fact. And who knows how difficult or long this subsequent special research would be. Looking at some of the like the level requirements, I don't think it's you know that crazy a concept to think that Niantic would do something real crazy and real stupid with the requirements for the special research. We'll have to see. Well it would make but, sense, you know, work work for it to get it. Sure. And then it's then sure. it becomes a flex. It'll be a serious fucking flex. But this has led to some community questions we don't have the answers for yet. 
I'd imagine more info is going to be coming prior to this because it's so far ahead. But this is what the community has really been asking. Will shiny evolved forms be in the wild? Meaning, will shiny Ivysaur be in the wild? You know what I mean? Like we've seen Venusaur shiny in raids. We've seen Bulbasaur shiny in the wild. Will something like Ivysaur be shiny in the wild? We don't know if those shiny versions count towards evolved Pokemon as well. So that's a good question. Next, how will Ditto be encountered and handled? Will this be like where we come across uh, a shiny Zubat and then it turns into a shiny Ditto? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, that, those questions are still up in the air. How is I hope it's just, like, a normal Pokemon, but then when you catch it, it, like, goes into Ditto, but it, like, it just is a shiny Ditto. A shiny Ditto? That way here, it's, like, it forces you to, like, catch everything. Uh, see, good questions. How, how will Ditto be handled? That's a big one. Uh, and also, will we see the regionals move around? They say all 150 will be shiny. Are we going to see, like, Farfetch'd, you know, come over? Are we going to see Kangaskhan? Um, I don't know. We'll, so those questions are still up in the air. Hopefully we'll get some more information as we get closer to the event. Now, there will also be a non-ticketed version of the event, which will have some features available to all trainers, obviously, if you don't buy the ticket. Now, Kanto Pokemon will be appearing more often in the wild and in raids. That's a given. The legendary birds with legacy moves will be available, as well as Psy Strike Mewtwo, in five-star raids. So Legendary Birds and Mewtwo in raids. That's awesome. Uh, event exclusive timed research. And get this, trade range increased to 40 kilometers. Really Ooh. fucking cool. Love that shit. This is 1199 US. You know, so there's your equivalent. Some countries, the price is fucking bananas because of Apple's regulations. Like, I think it's something like... I forget where, where someone was complaining... Um, online where the, the price was close to like a triple A title on Xbox, you know, Series X because for the fucking thing, just because of the way Apple handles their transactions. <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with Niantic. It's just, you know, Apple is, you know, is what it is. But it, I absolutely think that they the seven ninety nine to eleven ninety nine price tag for something like this is is realistic is is you know and not insulting to to, to gamers i i think that for a free-to-play game doing all this shit you're getting special research timed research you're going to get all this stuff back poffins you know um lucky eggs you know star pieces all this shit you're going to get these items that if bought alone would cost more than the 11.99 plus you're you know if you buy early you're getting tickets to the community day special research I did the math on it. It's something like you save fucking 18 cents a day till the event and you can fucking afford it. So it's like, it, it is what it is. But I just think that this big an event where it's this comprehensive and they're going all out with all these shinies, it's like if they do one of these like every six months for all the generations, I mean, for all the regions, this could be like another big replacement for something like a Safari Zone or a GoFest. Like, because that's how big I think this event is going to be. And people are really fucking excited about this. Like, this is this is a big deal. And then, mind you, you have the whole split ticket version thing, which is going to get people trading and get people playing, you know, with, with friends. Like, I just, I love everything about this fucking event. Start to finish, I love everything about this. I'm probably going to go with red version. Uh, I, you know, it's it's got Oddish in it. I like Oddish. So give Goes me for the sh- version without <laughs> his favorite Pokemon, Geodude. Ugh. Look, man, I've got my shiny Geodudes. I can fucking trade for them. I want Oddish. But uh, no, Hitmonlee, Hitmonchan, those are the new Pokemon. So it's like, you know, increased chances for the shinies. But everything in Kanto is going to be fucking shiny. Uh, oh, people are, have also asked about like... Tyrogue and Munchlax, you know, being shiny because of their evolved forms are in Kanto. No announcement has been made on anything like that. I highly doubt that Munchlax or Tyrogue will be shiny. So it'll be one of those situations where you'll have to wait to get the complete shiny line because, you know, obviously 
you can evolve up with a shiny, but not down. But uh, what do you think of this event overall? I mean, this is this is a pretty big deal, right? I absolutely love the versions aspect of it. I love the fact that it's the same day people will be playing and you essentially have to find somebody that has the other version so you can trade with them. Like you don't think that makes FOMO? No, no. I actually think it, it increases the core values of the game. Socially because, and everything. Yeah, you you have to communicate with somebody. And like this is a perfect opportunity to get together with somebody that's your lucky friend and just keep going, you know? Yeah, I, I don't think it's uh, it was uncoordinated that they're increasing the trade range during this event because that makes total sense. Okay. You know, someone on the other side of town who bought the other version, now you can do your trades, stay socially distant, and, you know. And you can communicate through is... Discord, through your Facebook groups, anything like that. And just, you know, find somebody. I'm sure somebody will be like, oh, I've caught three Hitmonchans. Who has a Hitmon Lee? No, I, I, I absolutely adore this style event. I do think that the versions are kind of cool. It's a really cool nod to the original games. Uh, I mean, still to this day, Sword and Shield. I mean, there's there's Pokemon that are in one and not the other. So that's just a, a staple of how Pokemon has done this from the beginning. So I dig it. I, I absolutely dig it. And I just think that this can be a, a, a huge format for events going forward. I think that they could do this once every six months and just update the region. You know, it's like we have Johto in six months. You know what I mean? Or something like that. Like... I don't know. I, I I really I really think this is this is going to be a, a solid event for Niantic, and you know they're going to fucking crush it with sales. But you know we'll we'll, we'll have to see. I, I, you know I'm sure we'll get more details. You know on on the little stuff uh, as we get closer to the event. But I'm I'm very 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 fucking excited. So shiny Mew. Now at the top of the show I mentioned that we have two shiny mythical Pokemon coming to the game. The first with the you know Pokemon Tour. Uh, Pokemon Go Tour Kanto is Shiny Mew, but Adam, you have the floor. Let let us know about the next da, da, da. Shiny Mythical Pokemon coming to the game. The Secrets of the Jungle. The next Pokemon movie, Secrets of the Jungle, has been announced with a Japanese release date of December 25th. To celebrate, Pokemon Go will be bringing us a special research and an event inspired by the movie. Awesome. Because I feel like they had... Ash and Go go to the cat like the Kalos region where Mega Evolution was. And it also was around it's like like that just got released in Pokemon Journeys. And it's like weird because Pokemon Go, we just got all that stuff. So No, dude. It's not I don't know. Weird. I just no, I think it's it, it, yeah, this it's all coordinated. All I think it's so cool. Literally, it it was like Listen to the next Gotta Watch Mall because I have some stuff to say. <laughs> well, didn't didn't you even say that that the next TCG set that's coming out around February will have a shiny uh, a shiny Ditto? Yes. Yep. See, yeah. So you, the shiny Ditto like... in the TCG form will come out on the nineteenth in Shiny Star V, and it'll come out in the game on the twentieth. Insanity! So cool. it's, it's so cool. It's so cool. Uh, starting on Monday, December fourteenth at eight AM local time. A limited time special research story inspired by the movie, which results in a guaranteed encounter with Shiny Celebi. Yes. Shiny Celebi yes, is yes. pink and looks amazing. It's so good. It's so good. Uh, something interesting about this special research is that it will be Jesse and James that guide us through it. Because of this, the Meowth Balloon will be back and Team Go Rocket will have different shadow Pokemon. And there will be avatar items inspired by Jesse and James's outfits from the movie in the shop. Holla, holla. Yeah. Uh, both the special research and Meowth balloons are limited, but we do not have any info on when they will be going away. So just do yeah, it. Just get get on it starting the 14th. Exactly. Uh, there are a few other features of this event, uh, with the first being the release of the Explorer Pikachu, which will be coming to the wild and in raids from December 14th through the 21st. Uh, you can also catch Explorer Pikachu during the December 15th spotlight hour. So be it sure looks to so good. yeah, be sure it to get this so one. Good. It it does look good. I can't necessarily. It has a little mad. canteen. It's not a hat. I mean, it's technically yeah. It is. I mean, well, it has I, a I'm hat just not gonna get a... mad at this one. I'm gonna I'm gonna no, let this one slide. It's good. I'm not gonna get mad. 
Uh, next up, we're going to have a small <laughs> event featuring Pokemon connected to the movie uh, from Monday, December 14th at 8 a.m. to Thursday, December 17th, local time. Hoot Hoot, Nuzleaf, Drillbur, Cotney, Dwebble, and more will be appearing in the wild, while Lickitung, Mawile, Flygon, Rufflet, and others will be in raids. Five kilometer eggs will feature Iglybuff, Smoochum, Alekid, Magby, Bonsly, and Rufflet making this a pretty comprehensive event. Uh, lastly, look out for an increase in Jesse and James Meowth balloon uh, on December 25th from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. local time. Whew, holy confusing dates, Batman. Well, So this is what I meant by them saying, like, okay, here's one blog post for an event, but within that, there's three separate dates you have to be aware of. So they tell us that starting on the 14th, you know, you have Explorer Pikachu. Starting on the 14th, you have the limited special research. You have Jesse and James. You have Team Go Rocket Balloons. They're coming, but we don't know when they're going away. But then it says on the 25th that we have increased of, you know, Meowth balloons. So we can assume that Meowth, the balloon, Meowth balloons will at least be here from the 14th to the 25th. But who knows? So... All, all these compounding dates, it's, it's very confusing. Now, here's another interesting thing to note regarding the movie. So the Pocket Monsters movie, there, like, there was another movie that came out in Japan in July. That's the one with Zarud, like the new, the new legend. Zarud. Zarud. But typically, the Pokemon movies in Japan will come out in July, and then like Fathom Entertainment will bring it to the States in like November. Obviously, because of COVID last November, this movie never came to the States. So now we have another movie coming out in Japan. We have shit going on in game. Will this movie come to the U.S. before the Zarud movie? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just so weird that like we totally skipped over that Zarud movie and we're already talking about the next movie. But <laughs> Right? But we'll we'll have to see. But there is, uh, I mean, it is pretty cool that Jesse and James are going to be doing the uh, the special research. You know what I mean? Like, they're, I believe in the code, they found, like, the little, you know, the icon to replace Professor Willow. Like, when Professor Willow wants to talk to you, you have that little icon in the where your Today View is. You know what I mean? The little button. It's That's Jesse and James. Like, so it, it's, <laughs> it's cool that they're, oh, man, can you imagine if they did VO? Oh. That would be so fucking Please, great. please. That would be so To protect good. the world from something. They would have to, do. they'd have to get the right actors, the real actors. Oh, that would have been so cool. But, no, I, I you know, more fucking events. So we wrapped up Kalos Celebration. We, we've we got Kanto thing. The, the Kanto tour doesn't start till February. So that's, that's still down the road. But now we're going to start to fill out our December calendar and the Secrets of the Jungle event is, you know, really going to be one of the, the the first things that we see, you know, come 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 back to December. But we have a lot more to talk about here, Adam. Why don't wait? We, uh, there's more. But wait, there's there more. is more. <laughs> Why don't we take a take a break and uh, you know let let that let that marinate a little bit, and then when we come back, we'll talk about uh, a shit ton of miscellaneous news, including another event. And then we have actually two more events to talk about plus December Community Day. So, yeah, there's a lot of shit going on. So why don't we take a quick break and when we come back, we'll wrap up. All right. Sounds like a plan. All right. We'll be back right after this. Oh, and we're back. Yep. <laughs> I was trying to make it like Christmassy. It, it was like I thought it was like it was it was working, and then I was like, no, it's just no, it's, it's cringe. It's cringe. It's cringe. All right, a little housekeeping to get through before the ass of the show. Uh, as per usual, this podcast is powered by Patreon. Please check ours out over at patreoncom Pokemon Professor, where you can support the show for as little as one dollar a month. That $1 will get you access to our patron-exclusive Discord, which is a fantastic place filled with fantastic people. 
And I want to give a huge shout out to our show supporter tier patrons, Ace Trainers, Alex, Andrew, Brian, Brittany, Chad, Carol, Chris, Other Chris, Garrett, GStacks87, Griggle788, Harry, Haircross Boss, James, J. Mackle, Jolt Switch, Lynchbot, Malachi, Mike, M. Pitts, Pookie Nebbot, Purple Pancake, Sam Smeatwa, The Joker, The Noise, Woodwoose Wolf, and upping their patronage this week, Lady Gobbly Meat, and new for this week, Ken. And Ken is, uh, I want to give a special shout out to him because he's a Red Bank player. And uh, he joined our patron Zoom call today, which was great. Ken, great to see you. And uh, he is a wealth of Pokemon information. So he's going to make a great addition to the community. Glad to have him. Uh, Also, shout out to Ryan for joining at the Discord tier this week. And a huge shout out to our gym leaders, Dig Dug Rob, Jamal, Magikarpe Diem, Talon, Tish, TN Comics Wiz, and upping their patronage this week, JD Mojo Jojo. Thank you so Mojo much Jojo. for your support. Uh, also, a tons of love to our executive producer, Paul Bot. Man, Paul's been supporting us for well over a year now. Uh, Paul is the man. It's awesome. It really is. It really is great. Uh, But if Patreon isn't your thing, there's still a couple other ways you could help us out. If you're listening on YouTube, you can subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. If you're listening via a podcast service like Apple Podcasts, you can take a moment to leave us a review. And finally, our merch store is up and recently updated. PokemonProfessor.com slash merch. All right. A lot of miscellaneous news to cover here. Uh, and there's actually a full-blown event inside our miscellaneous news section here. And this event is happening tomorrow. So we're recording this on a Wednesday. The podcast release is on Friday. This event is on the Thursday tomorrow. That's in between recording and releasing. So I'll stuff it in here. Now, tomorrow is also the Game Awards. So the Game Awards are like the Academy Awards for games. Big award show. Um, Jeff Keighley puts it on every year. It's a huge fucking production. It's grown, you know, year after year after year. Absolutely amazing. There's always, you know, celebrities and big announcements. It's just an amazing event. So to celebrate, Pokemon Go has uh, partnered with the Game Awards, and they're hoping that you play some Pokemon Go while you're watching the show. There is a small event tied to the awards, which runs tomorrow the 10th, Uh, at 4 p.m. to Friday the 11th at 4 p.m., so 24 hours starting tomorrow. Uh, It's going to feature more effective incense, bonus Stardust from catching. Uh, They they don't clarify how much bonus Stardust, maybe double, who the fuck knows. Uh, More frequent Team Go Rocket grunts, and the highly anticipated return of the ability to TM away frustration from Shadow Pokemon. (laughs) Huge. Absolutely huge. PvP people have been begging for this. Uh, well, we hope here you go. Everyone was able to take advantage of this during the event window, which is pretty much wrapped up by the time you hear this. I now, will have forgotten to use my TMs to TM away frustration. Dude, I just deleted 50 charge TMs. I'm just sitting on so many. It's like, and then this announcement comes out. It's like, man, I wish I kept them. I would have just done every single shadow I have. But. You know, it is what it is. Uh, All right, next bit of miscellaneous news. There will be a new test rolling out today to trainers in the United Kingdom and Ireland. It will feature some temporary adjustments to raid rewards and egg management that will run through early January. Now, we don't know how the the raid rewards are going to be adjusted. We'll have to find out over the next couple days. But I think it's pretty safe to say that trainers will see an increase in rewards from raids because everything has just kind of been bolstered lately when it comes to XP and Stardust. Obviously, level cap increase, double, you know, XP still going to the end of the year. The power creep is happening. The CPs are increasing. You have to reinforce that, you know, in more ways than one. So I'd imagine that raid rewards will increase. Now, as for egg management, uh, there's going to be a global test rolling out to select trainers in two variations. Now, Global test, meaning it's not limited to one region, but select trainers, meaning will this be for level 40? Will there be random people selected? We don't know. So we'll have to we'll have to keep an eye on it. But in both variations of this test, trainers will be able to store up to three additional eggs from weekly Adventure Sync rewards and Team Go Rocket leader battles. And uh, this happens like if they already have nine eggs in their storage. That's so we phenomenal. talked about it. Yeah, in previous episodes we were talking about how if you had nine eggs, it was fuck up your 
you know, your, your team leader stuff because you wouldn't want to battle a team leader until you had an empty egg slot because you want to get that strange egg, that 12K egg. So this kind of gives you a little bit more flexibility here, where even if you have nine eggs in your storage, you have three additional spots specifically for strange eggs and adventure sink eggs. Very, very cool. This test is going to begin on December 11th, so the day this comes out, and will continue indefinitely. No, no end date on this. Uh, we're going to have to see when they announce the close of the test, but I absolutely love this. Because there's definitely scenarios where I have to be very, very careful with my Pokeball Plus because I always have it set to spin stops. Where if I hatch an egg and I have a rocket radar, I don't want to spin the next stop. I want to save that slot for wanna. a strange egg. So I, I think this is a, a fantastic idea. It'll be interesting to see what data they pull away from this and what ends up becoming the norm. But uh, I like this. This is only positive, right? This I is can, good stuff. I can almost guarantee it will be something like more like if if there's an increase in like egg or not egg uh incubator purchases something like that something along those lines where people are spending more money to get rid of well if you other, could hold more eggs, eggs you gotta yes you gotta, yes but they're trying to get rid of them, them so they can have 12 you know strange eggs interesting interesting See what I'm saying? 12 10k eggs 12 bouts of disappointment. <laughs> 12 2Ks. <laughs> Fucking in Trubbish. super Trubbish incubators everywhere at and then, full distance. So uh, let's see what else we have. The Reggies returning to five-star oh, yes, yes, during yes, the yes, remaining yes. December weekends. This is, this could be good, could be bad. There's, you know, they could can be, be shiny. good. What's good about it? So uh, Reggie Rock will be appearing December 12th and 13th. That's this weekend during Community Day. Uh, Registeel will be appearing the 19th and 20th, and Regice will be appearing the 26th and 27th. Now, mind you, Kiram will also be in five-star raids as well. So during the weekends for the rest of December, you'll have Kiram plus one of the Regis in five-star raids. That's pretty cool. Uh, depends on who you are. Yeah. I mean, everyone knows Registeel is good for PvP, so I'm sure that'll be the, the busiest weekend as far as remote raiding and all that. Well, plus there's no community day, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, search functionality has been updated. This is phenomenal. This is one of my favorite quality of life updates. So uh, many updates. buttons. All right. It is a little, yeah. Last time we recorded, we talked about, you know, the colors, what could it be, blah, blah, blah. So it turns out there you can customize this. And a lot of people didn't realize that you can customize your own searches. So when you do a search... You can search on anything, Blissey, uh, Four Star, um, Shiny, whatever it is. You know, you can put a search string in there, Shiny and Age Zero and this, whatever, CP, you know, minus 1500, whatever it is. It saves that in your recent searches. If you long press on your recent searches, it'll favorite that recent search. So now that search will go under your favorites tab. If you long press on the search in under the favorites tab, you can then rename that search. So rather than have to call it by its search string name, you can put Sylph Nightfall, whatever it may be. So you can really get in down to the nitty gritty and customize this. Then you have all the tagging with the colors and everything. This is one of the best quality of life updates in a long time as far as management ui management have you fucked with this at all have you have you played with this yet not too much i mean i did hit the I, like i i don't really like that i can't just choose like the search option is like zero one two so it's the zero star one star two well, the, stars yeah but that's those are just the 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 preset ones make your own i have that's not done I mean. that no yeah, not that's enough. the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Because they do give you a bunch of recommended. All right, Ken. <laughs> but like for me, I always put Blissies and Gyms. So rather than me have to type the word Blissy in, you know, B-L-I for the Blissies to come up, I can just, I have my, you know, I, I hit more and I hit Blissy. And it's, and they're my Blissies. So I really like that. Definitely, definitely cool. Uh, XP and Stardust updates. This is a fucking biggie. 
And Niantic did report on this on their blog a little bit. They talked about the XP side of things, but not the startup side of things. So I'll review what's on the blog for the XP, and then I'll come uh, back to the Stardust from what the community has, has gathered. So updates to XP. We talked about things being increased during that Australian test that have now rolled out globally. We talked about an excellent throw that used to be 100 XP is now worth 1,000 XP. If you go to the link in the description, you can see everything that has been increased, they itemize. So defeating a gym used to be 100 XP, now it's 1,000 XP. Defeating a Pokemon in the gym used to be 100 XP, it's now 300 XP. So again, all just reinforcing how much XP you earn. And Adam, you were just talking about people, you know, getting these strange eggs and, and you know, stocking up 12 of them. 4,000 XP for a strange egg hatch. That's, that's significant. That's significant, especially if you put have on of them. that star piece. Let's so go. Let's the, go. Well, the the start. Let, all right, we'll talk about Stardust real quick. So the Stardust portion of this, which they have not really posted anywhere, this is just from you know uh, the community getting this information together. A bunch of random Pokemon have had their Stardust values increased, and they did this because in the main series games, these Pokemon could be caught with a held item that could then be sold to a shop owner for, for money. So they had extra value. So they're kind of mirroring that. I like that. That's check wicked this out. cool. We knew like like Chimeca was worth a thousand Stardust. Audino was also worth bonus Stardust. So now listen to this. Paris, Parasect, Meowth, Delibird, Fungus, and Shroomish, 500 Stardust each. Wait, nice. did you say Delibird? Persian, Amoongus, and Breloom, 700 Stardust each. Alolan, Meowth, Sableye, Combi, Trubbish, and Staryu, 750 Stardust each. Alolan Persian, Vespaquin, Garboder, and Starmie, 950 Stardust each. I don't know when you'll fucking see those. Maybe during the Kanto event. But get this. Shelder, 1,000 Stardust. Cloyster, 1,200 Stardust. Audino, 2,100 Stardust. I don't know if they're going to be removing Shelder from the list of Pokemon that can nest... But if you find a fucking shelter nest, drop a star piece, that's a that's a huge payday for Stardust. So we'll have to keep Wait, an eye on that. Wait, you said this one. is coming from people that are like have seen this? I've or caught what, a, I've caught plenty of shelter at a thousand star Okay, stardust. but how do they know that Deli Bird's worth five hundred stardust right now? It's in the code. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. I was like, who's catching it? Who's and I don't know about it. I I'm, I need to fly or do something wherever they are. This was definitely the the fattest and beefiest miscellaneous news section that we've ever done. Two fucking events and, you know, updates to start us the XP. It's there's, there's so much going on. There's absolutely so much going on. But Adam, there is another event announced for December. You want to walk us through this one before we get into community day? Yet another winter based event has been announced, adding to the theme of our current season. Enjoy a weekend with Pokemon related to cold and sound as Galarian Mr. Mime and its evolution Mr. Rhyme come dancing into town. LOL, that's funny. Along with a ticketed special research story. From Friday, December 18th at 10 a.m. through Monday, December 21st at 8 p.m. local time, you can enjoy the following features. Whether or not you have a ticket for the special research or not, uh, Pokemon like Jinx, Swinub, Spoink, Woobat, and Cub Chew will be more attracted to incense. Shiny Cub Chew is going to be released. Give me that shiny booger. <laughs> shiny, yeah, shiny booger. We need it. Uh, <laughs> incense will also last for three hours and be more effective. Holla. That's so exciting. So, That's but I wonder so if this exciting. is stacking on top of the already effective stay at home no. bonus effectiveness. Stop getting your hopes up. This is, I know. Okay. This, this is Niantic, okay? Come on. Uh, <laughs> the ticketed special research story, which will cost seven ninety nine, or, you know, whatever you're, you are equivalent, will earn you an encounter with Galarian Mr. Mime, as well as enough candy to evolve up into Mr. M- Mr. Rhyme. Right. Uh, included with the ticket will be a special event medal and an avatar pose inspired by Mr. Rhyme. Uh, rewards will include three rare candies, 30 Ultra Balls, three battle passes, one poffin, two glacial lures, 
three super incubators and three star pieces. Yo, that's Woo. a fucking deal. That right is there. a deal. That's a deal. That's, that's a deal. A deal. Well, I mean, the See, three rare candies doesn't really make sense. Yeah, I know. But this is how <laughs> they validate the. They should validate the price of these events. Because some people would be like, oh, I'm paying $7.99 for, to get a shiny. Even when they did uh, Regigigas, it was $7.99. You got to get Regigigas prior to it coming to EX Raids. What the fuck are EX Raids coming back? But you could do that, and it, or you could wait a couple months and get it when it came to EX Raids, right? So an event like this, it's like the shiny Cub Chew is available whether you have a ticket or not. But if you do buy the ticket... You're getting, you know, the, all these other bonuses, but you're getting all this shit. A medal, an avatar pose. You know what I mean? 30 ultra balls, whatever. Three rare candies, whatever. But three premium battle passes, a poffin, glacial lures, three super incubate. Like, I think this is a a very, very good value. And, uh, you know, I understand the free-to-play players, but there's no FOMO here because all the stuff is still available to, to the free-to-play player, even if you don't buy the ticket. So I, I think it's, you know, for those that are willing to pay the seven ninety nine it's a solid, solid value. I'm willing. I'm willing. Take my money. Just throw it at the window. Let's go. Can you imagine if the if the pose comes with a cane? Oh, my like you gosh. Have, you have like that the would Mr. Be Ryan. Oh, my God. Absolutely ridiculous. It would be so great. Like you were doing like the, hello, my baby. Hello, my doll. Like the dance move, you know, like tap dance. <laughs> well, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's kind of like, I don't, I don't know. I was kind of thinking like you're on like one foot and your hands on your hips type deal, almost like you're dancing. Yeah, well, it'll definitely be dancing. That's that's how that's how Mister 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 Mom gets down. Can't necessarily dance. You can't like make moves. You just kind of sit still like a zombie. I don't know. I don't know. But again, another event in December. You know, on top of the seasons. Well, wait, is there another event? Nova. Well, we have During fucking December? Community Day this weekend. <laughs> oh, Two gosh. events. Come on. More so, events? Yeah. We, we, I we will be working in the limited details weekend. that we had last week about Community Day. But now we can go over the complete info for the event. We have all the details. Uh, community Day kicks off this weekend, and which is Saturday, the, December 12th at 6 a.m. And ends Sunday, December 13th at 10 p.m. So... Again, the compounding times and dates, you just have to be aware. The whole event, the the Community Day weekend, which sounds so weird to say, the Community Day weekend, 6 a.m. on Saturday to 10 p.m. on Sunday. The whole weekend shit is going on. Pokemon that were featured in Community Days during 2019 and 20 uh, will be appearing more frequently during the weekend, with some being in the wild and some being in raids. Uh, We can see... Uh, over the weekend, we'll have Charmander, Weedle, Abra, Ghastly, Rhyhorn, Electabuzz, Magmar, Magikarp, Porygon, Seedot, and Piplup in the wild. Those are the 2020 Pokemon. And then in Raids and 2K Eggs, you have the 2019 Pokemon. Uh, Totodile, Swinub, Trico, Torchic, Mudkip, Ralt, Slackoth, Trapinch, Bagon, Turtwig, and Chimchar. Now, Whoa. check out the link in the description. We have the complete list of the exclusive moves that are available. Everything from 2019 and 2020 come back. Now, Pokemon like Charizard that had a community day in 2018 and then again in 2020, only the 2020 move will be available. And this has upset a lot of people because the real deal moves that you want, like Meteor Mash Metagross or Charizard with Blast Burn, you can't get. But Niantic said, don't worry, these moves will eventually come back in 2021 some way, somehow. But a lot of people have been holding out. Not, you know, they don't want to use the Elite TM, but Just unfortunately- use the those, Elite TM. That's, you're, you're, they like, you're talking, they like, they like, you're talking they, to the battlers feed, here, man. They don't, they're not they easily feed, reasoned they with. They feed you a TM every community day. <laughs> Oh, and the uh, the community day box in the shop, it's still going to cost twelve eighty. However, it will come with both an elite fast and an elite charge TMs. Five lucky eggs. What did I just say? Balls. What did I just so say? This is the first time, though, that this box comes with both fast and charge TMs. So that's pretty cool. 
event exclusive timed research will be available and will reward an elite charge TM along with some other goodies. And a $1 special research will also be available for the weekend. Uh, we do have some differences in the two event days. And while the events do run all through the night, like we have that 6 a.m., you know, goes goes all through the weekend. The normal community day times of 11 to 5 local time, that's really where the bread and butter is going to be. From 11 to 5 on Saturday, Weedle, Abra, Gasly, Rhyhorn, Dot, and Piplop will be appearing even more frequently and will be more likely to be shiny. So what this is telling me is during the bulk of the weekend, outside of the 11 to 5 window, all these Pokemon will be available, but they're probably not going to have the 1 in 20 or 1 in 25 typical community day shiny rate. I'm sure it'll still be boosted, maybe 1 in 50, 1 in 75 or something like that, but it won't be the community day rate. However, from 11 to 5, these select Pokemon will have that community day rate, so that's good. Um, th- this this helps you target your your gameplay. So like, if well, you're really I looking- I appreciate all of this because I'm going after Piplup. Well, there you go. I was, pl- I was so, playing. So you know to play TCG Saturday from eleven to five. The last physical TCG tournament I played in was Piplup Community Day. There you go. There you and go. I and I think I got one. Good. 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 Uh, Sunday, um, from 11 to 5, we'll have Charmander, Electabuzz, Magmar, Magikarp, and Porygon appearing more frequently with a higher shiny rate. Oh, also, you're going to have Double Catch Stardust. Oh, let me go back to Saturday. Double Catch Stardust, Half Hatch Distance, 3 Hour Incense, Mega Gengar appearing in Mega Raids more frequently. Sunday, Double Catch Stardust, Half Hatch Distance, 3 Hour Incense, and Mega Charizard Z appearing in in mega raids more frequently. So little differences through the day links in the description. If you want to check it out, but Holy shit. It's like, there's, it's just insane. How much is cooking through December. And and this is all happening while we're going through season six of GBL. And we have the holiday cup coming. We still don't have an announcement of Deli bird. When the fuck is Deli bird? I know literally. I mean, I appreciate the fact that like I don't know anything about it, <laughs> and that you've 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 specifically made it made sure, <laughs> so like I don't know anything, and uh, it's gonna feel like the excitement level is like building. It's, you know, it's it's not December without Deli Bird, right? But think that's, about that's, it, man. That's next year's that's next year's special research. It's not but, December without no without but Deli think, Bird, dude. Think about it. You have Community Day happening on the twelfth and thirteenth. You've got the Secrets of the Jungle starting on the 14th. You've got the Game Awards happening tomorrow. You've got the uh, Cold Air, you know, bullshit happening on the 20, uh, the 18th through the 21st. There's just so much happening. I don't know, man. I, they, 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 we always say, can they keep up this pace? And here they are proving themselves right. You know, they're, they're, they're still fucking doing it. It's crazy. It's absolutely fucking crazy. So um, that's pretty much it. But I I just, I hope everyone is having so much fun with this game right now. The excitement level has just been so high and everyone is just, is just getting it in. Like it's, I keep, I keep running out of balls. I'm just catching so many Pokemon. I did a, a major fucking restock run the other day because I wanted to prepare for community day. I was like, yeah, I'm going to go fucking restock. I'm not going to catch shit. I'm just going to drive around, keep the, the Pokeball Plus on auto spin. And I left with like 1,300 Pokeballs and 600 Ultra Balls. I was like, fuck yeah, I'm, I'm set. And then today <laughs> I used 400 Pokeballs and 100 Ultra Balls. And it's like, fuck, man. <laughs> it's like, I got to go back. But you no, know, I'm still sitting almost at 1,000 Pokeballs. But uh that I, I've heard that people are playing so much and there's so much going on that resources have once again become part of the conversation. People running out of balls. Unbreakable was saying that she was out of revives. So it's like that conversation is back in the forefront. We just had the increase to Pokemon storage. Does this mean that Pokemon item storage is the next thing to be, you know, increased again? <sighs> I don't know. You ready to spend another 20 bucks to just nope. increase your... Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. Stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. They, when they increased that Pokemon storage, I couldn't spend that 20 bucks fast enough, dude. I was like... Pew! 
world. It's gone. <laughs> Fucking oh, burr, 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 power to that shit up. I was like, that's it. <laughs> so funny. So funny. But Adam, holy shit, man. There's a lot going on. There's there is a, a lot going on. So just make sure you stay tuned to our social media for, you know, all the little details that I'm sure will come out as we get closer to all these events. You know, connect with us, email us, call us, all that good stuff. It's just, wow. There's so much. Yeah, going if you on. like Kalos Pokemon, check out our Instagram. I've posted, you know, a couple there with our AR card of the day thing. It's yeah, pretty cool. I, I really like pretty what you did cool. with the starters and uh, and with Litleo. They they look fantastic. They look fantastic. Also, if you're into the TCG, uh, next Friday or this Friday, the 11th, uh, the day this podcast comes out, we're doing a how to play the TCG webinar on Twitch. So you can definitely check that out. The following week, Adam is hosting a TCG theme deck tournament for our patrons. We, we've got a lot of shit cooking. Just connect with our socials and, uh, and stay tuned because uh, there's just so much going on. Uh, next week, we'll have an episode of the Creator Series coming out featuring Chris from the GoCast podcast. The following week, we'll have Salt and Nar from Pokemon Go Radio. A lot of shit happened. A lot of shit happened. Check out LureDuff.com for everything with the show. PokemonProfessor.com for everything with the network. Uh, you can email us, info at LureDuff.com. And you can leave us a voicemail or a text, 732-835-8639. I apologize, didn't get to the emails. We're running a little bit long, so we'll get to those next week. Uh, but Adam, if that's, uh, if that's it, I think that's it. That's it. And I'm like 99% sure the pizza I just ordered is here. All right. Keep training, trainers. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week. Adam, go get pizza.